Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. And so excited today because we are talking with Siri from the Sami tribe up in northern Norway. Uh, hello. hello. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Me, I'm great. Uh, busy. Three kids, a uh, reindeer herder's wife. So um, the days are um, going fast and a lot of things to do, but I enjoy enjoy it very much. Great, great. Uh, I guess my first question, just some basic stuff like, um, where are the Sami? Who are they? And um, yeah, what does your life look like? Yeah, it's a very big question because the Samis are spread uh, in Norway, Sweden, Russia, and Finland. And uh, you have different kinds of Samis, like uh, we are reindeer herder Samis, and you have uh, river Samis, sea Samis. Uh, it depends where you're, you're living and what do you um, have and are using as a resource to to survive with. Uh, but nowadays, the Samis are working as other people, uh, like in normal jobs. Um, but except from the reindeer Samis, uh, it's still a lot of like it was for like 50 years ago. So because we are following the nature and the reindeer. So, so that thing hasn't changed. Um, just the society has changed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's pretty rare that even, even some people are li able to live traditionally. And yeah, I mean, modern day, that's, that's how it is. So a lot of people. Yes, yes. And, um, but we, like, um, there are, I don't know how much people know about Sami people, but uh, I have a little baby here. So. <laughs> Problem. Thanks, mommy. <laughs> Hello. Hi there. Yeah, it's Maya Selena. She's very cute. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. So I don't know what uh, what you want to know more about the Samis because um, it's quite uh, different from different views actually, but the we're all the same in one way yeah so you're in a house right now you're not in a in a lavo but sometimes you are in a lavo or how does that or do you have another house in another location when you're moving with the herd yeah we use lavo uh, and they also have been using lavo in older like times but now we also have newer houses that we use mm -hmm. uh, like a sledge with a house um, it's called the uh, gumpi in norwegian or sami mm -hmm. uh, or uh, we also use these pop-up tents mm -hmm. so we are quite uh, where <laughs> we use what is um, um, uh, easy and uh, also what makes the job easier for us but yeah. we also use lavu uh, because it's also easy to put it up and we can use the resources we have around the trees to make to make the the lavu like yeah. stand yeah so a lavu uh, is what is a lavu uh it, lavu is a traditional uh, tent or teepee mm -hmm. that we have been using for many many hundred years to yeah to stay in. Uh, it's good if, if it's windy, if it's rainy, uh, we, we make fire inside. Yeah. So we can sleep in it, we can live in it. And yeah, it's a very um, good house to stay in when, when we are uh, working outside. Okay. Mm. Do you know um, how long have the Sami been around or how old is the Sami culture? <laughs> Oh, it's very, very old. We have, tra um, we have, um, uh, what's the traces? Yeah, from twelve thousand years here up here um, in 
Varanger. Varanger is the, the only fjord here in Norway that's facing east. And it's also the oldest, um, like the oldest fjord. Um, and they have been finding very, very old traces from living. Uh, and it's about 12,000 years ago. So, oh. yeah. And then it's always the question, who came first? Sure. <laughs> So yeah, but we believe the Samis have been here for a very, very long time. Who came first as a, like who, who else would have come first? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of questions. It's like a mix of people, the, the people yeah. of North, uh, um, North, North. Um, yeah. And like uh, Vikings. And Vikings also, yeah. but the Vikings, yeah, I don't know so much about the Viking history. Um, sure. But, uh, but I, I know that, I think that the ones who have been here, it's a good mix. And mm -hmm. um, for me, it's not so important if it was the Samis or uh, other people or other, um, yeah. yeah. But I, I believe that we have been living peacefully here in many, many, many hundred thousand of centuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. so what is one of your favorite Sami like legends or stories to tell? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, like good question, but uh, I can tell you that the Samis have been using stories to raise the kids. Uh, so there are a lot of different kinds of stories. Um, and also to, um, to like we tell stories to the kids. Okay. Uh, well, like, that kind of goes into like one of my other questions was like, what do you feel like a kid, a kid needs to grow up well, you know? And then maybe it can go into that. Like maybe a story can come from that. Yeah, like in our culture, it has been like that we, we tell stories to kids, like don't go near the water, for example, because there lives the water um, monster. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds horrible, but it's it, it has been like a way that we provide them to go to the water because we, uh, that we, we learn our kids to be very independent in one way and yeah. to know to, to handle the life and um, Sure. And to 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 like I don't know how to explain it, but to to come over the the bumps in life, like yeah. to yeah. Uh, so storytelling to, to handle things on their own to be able to yeah. Be so yeah. So we use storytelling to to raise our kids in that way also, but uh, like also good ways and like the stories that are not so good, but the kids will remember, like don't go to the water, don't yeah. go to the river, stay yeah. away from the fire. <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing, so. Um, so there's uh, a story about a water monster? Yeah, it's like, the, yeah, it's like the water monster. Don't go to the water because the water monster is there. And that's, the, the kids don't go to the water then. <laughs> when they grow up then they will realize why yeah. we did that so <laughs> oh monsters are a huge part of all cultures you know so yeah. so um yeah but the monster the word monster it sounds terrible it's it's a milder word in the sami uh -huh. we, we don't yeah so is it more like a spirit or yeah yeah more like a spirit i will uh -huh. say that so... yeah so it's not so terrifying as it sounds like. What is the word for the water spirit? Chatsarauga uh, is the word. Chatsarauga? Yeah. So, so that's like the water. The spirit is another word in Sami, but, um, but the, the rauga is more like a cre creature. Creature. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I guess I was just going to ask, like, what kind of celebrations around the year or some of the traditions that you celebrate throughout the year? Has that and that has that also come into Norse culture? Do they still do the Norse or Swedish culture celebrate 
any Sami traditions throughout the year? Yeah, we have the Sami, the the, um, the Sami Independent Day. Uh, uh -huh. It's the sixth of February. Uh, it's a huge day, and uh, and we celebrate like with a good meal and. And we dress up nice, and uh, we meet people. There are things happening for children, and there are speeches. And uh, the Norwegian government also the the last years it has been like better. Um, the king and the, the 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 prince, and they are like also saying it in the television, like um, do do doing their gratitudes. So, and the media is broadcasting it more and more. So it's getting quite uh, like big, uh, like our culture is more visible now uh, than it has been. So I, I think it's very nice. Yeah, it seems like there's some positives. I mean, fine, I mean, it's the Sami have suffered some pretty horrible things in the past, right? Yes, yes, we had a rough beginning, but now, <laughs> Uh -huh. It seems to be uh, good, so, but it's like uh, all the, uh, how you say, tribes had their difficulties uh, and now the Norwegian government, they are doing their things to make it up for us and I think that's nice, but that's uh, yeah, so yeah. Well what do you feel like I've been having this conversation with a few people about kind of this opportunity for tourism and kind of eco tourism to not only like to help preserve indigenous cultures, but also kind of give this opportunity to, I, I don't know, for cultures to make money or even like, around just just the cult and so like preserving and making money around it at the same time i mean it's it's tricky because I, I wonder like i guess this is my question is is like we're coming in this you know these modern times you know things are needed money is needed um but how can we step into and empower indigenous cultures while at the same time preserving the tradition and preserving this relationship with the earth that's so needed um i guess what would what do you feel like is a struggle to preserve but also be modern <laughs> yeah i i think it's like to to keep it in the small scale because that's the only way to preserve it. Yeah. And uh, I can I, I can tell about our family. I, I, I don't know so much about other choices, other families and, and other uh, like uh, way of living. But in our like uh, in our family is that if the woman like me uh, should have the possibilities to work also with the reindeers and the reindeer herd, then uh, we can combine uh, tourism with the reindeer herding. Yeah. Or else I have to have a regular job uh, and work 100%, uh, maybe in just very different work, and then come home and be a reindeer herder's wife. And it means that I have to work a lot. Yeah, and that I don't want to do. So uh, yeah, I want to 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 have to to be able to show people uh, our way of living uh, and how we and our traditions is in our reindeer herding, and it, and that will be my work. And yeah. I also help uh, Pierre Ailo, who is uh, my partner. Yeah, and we can together work with the reindeer herding uh, husbandry mm -hmm. and so we can also learn our kids and uh, raise them up in our traditions without that i have to be working so much with other work like, yeah 
Yeah. So that so that is how we can do that, like in our family, and how I think the way is to preserve it in the small scale, and and not to make it um, industrialized or yes, <laughs> like a yes. factory. Yeah, and and that's not even possible in our. It's not possible for no. us to do it because we're only one family and oh, we're actually two families. It's my nephew is also a part of uh, this, uh -huh. but we are together in the same uh, uh, district. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a common plight for the modern woman to be yeah. working and raising kids. I mean, even now, like, you know, we're talking and you have your kids and it's tough. Yeah, it's yeah it's tough but it's it's also how how you do it uh, yeah it's like you have to take care of you and your family and do what's the best for you and yeah. we have found this solution that that i hope will work for us because yeah. it's still quite new what we are doing um, right yeah we shall see i mean it's it's new for us too and what we're trying to do and i and i like this idea of of families yeah like and and visitors even coming and being not just observing you know but also helping you know and so so it can be on this small scale if if families are open to people coming in and and viewing i mean i mean it's never like we're not come you know you're you're not like thankful for the help that we're coming in you have to like teach us like babies you know like how you live <laughs> you know so it's not it's not absolutely yeah. um, it's not like a huge help hello how are you this is my son he just came from the school <laughs> oh nice nice to meet you what's your name <laughs> say it again johan ailo johan ailo i'm blake Hey Blake. Hey Blake. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. So so yeah, it's um. Yeah, but it, we we are happy to have uh, people like uh, we because uh, since um, we have three kids, then we also need help sometimes and. And for us, it's very, very good to to meet new people, and yeah. uh, together we do to do things and we help each other. Right. And it's also very important in the the Sami families and big families to to help each other. Yeah, to yeah. help fam families around. And mm, that's very important. That's something yeah. I think a lot of Western culture has lost. Is this? Yeah this help from families this strive to be independent and on your own is makes it very hard for people we're not species that needs to be alone we need to be together <laughs> yeah and we need to also to ask help uh, huh. to for, for many people it's difficult to ask for help yeah so we have to be good at that because yeah. we can do things alone but sometimes it's better to ask for help okay mm -hmm. what um is i'll go back into some of the questions um what will you never forget about your grandparents um they were very um uh like a couple and holding their hands Mm -hmm. And for me, that was very sweet to see yeah. old people caring so much uh, about each other. And my grandfather got hundred hundred years old, hundred and one year, yeah, mm -hmm. hundred and one years. So, so he got very old. Amazing. And, yeah, and my grandmother also. I think she was ninety four. So they were like. Oh, like I were lucky to have them a long time in my life. That's amazing. So yeah, the love they showed each other it was very and caring, very very sweet. Um, what are some misconceptions that people have about Sami? 
that we live in a tent. <laughs> you always in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> we are living in a lavo, and um, I think that's the the most thing. And even some people in Norway yeah. think that we are very different. Like also the way we dress, or that we always wear our kufte, the Sami traditional dresses, which is very nice. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think that's the thing that we live in uh, the normal houses for yeah. many people. It's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the same thing happens with the, the Navajo tribes here, the native American tribes. You live in a teepee. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. So yeah, that's, yeah. but it's okay. <laughs> I wanted to ask a little bit more about uh, your relationship with the uh, reindeer herd and and what life looks like taking care of a herd. What is your daily life with the reindeer? Or yeah, that question is better to ask uh, Pierailo. He's good more with the herd, and okay. I have reindeers here at home. Uh, and of course, we take good care of them. Uh, next autumn, we're taming uh, taming them. Uh, we have some um, male uh, young uh, reindeers here that we uh, feed and we take care of them. And uh, we are going to make them as a how you say um, a driving. Yes, uh, pulling pulling sleighs. Yeah, in our tradition, it's uh, it's very normal to reindeer herders to have some pulling reindeer like uh, this. Um, okay. So you have some tame and some wild. Yeah, we are taming them. From the next autumn, we start. We had uh, this year. We had some young animals here at home just to 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 prepare them for the next. We take the same ones next uh, autumn. Yeah. And then they are stronger and then we can start to tame them. Okay. So, and are these, do the reindeer, are they belong, do they belong to the Sami? Do, are, do they belong to Norway or the public or? Uh, in the 1600th century, there were the wild reindeers. Yes. And then the... I think maybe seven or seventeen hundred century, eighteen. I'm not sure. Eighteen hundred century. Uh, then the the um, they started to this uh, like um, actually I'm not really sure how it started, but now it's like uh, the Samis have the reindeer herders have have uh, their own mark. The reindeers have their own mark uh, yeah. in the ears, and that's how they see who the reindeers belong to. Okay. So the reindeers here up in Northern Norway are like belonging to reindeer herders. Okay. Uh, there are some reindeers in the South that are wild. Okay. Uh, but there are also reindeer herders in the South or the middle of Norway. And they also have their own marks uh, and they're also doing like, in, they're also having like reindeers and and, um, and working like reindeer herders. Yeah. Um, and I mean, obviously it's been the Sami and the reindeer, you can't like take them apart, right? Or I mean, obviously there's Fisher Sami, but the reindeer Sami are, I mean, you've been living, both of you have been living together for thousands of years yeah um i guess i don't know it's um i mean that's a relationship that a, i guess a lot of people have lost in modern western culture like i mean there's farmers and mm -hmm. yeah very important relationships with with the animals but i feel like this gives you a closer connection to the earth and to its animals and that this is important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's very like, 
because the, the most important in the reindeer herders life is the, the reindeers. Like, because they are the ones who are deciding where they are, what they do um, in, the, in the symbiosity with the nature. Yeah. So to be connected to the animals is very important. Um, yeah. It's, and it's the tradition that you, it has always been like that. And you follow the reindeers. The reindeers are not following you, but you follow the reindeers. And uh, yeah. And that's something that will always be because the, the society around you like grows and changes, but the nature will stay. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's very important to try to, to provide that and to keep it that way. But we always have to fight for this big industries or minor companies are coming, the wind companies, they want to have lands because they see a lot of land that we're not using, but of course we are using it to our animals. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's it's probably weird. the biggest threat to Sami culture today is this. Yeah, just... it's like we, yeah, we, we have to fight. Uh, we have also some very um, brave and, and good politicians who are working and who are fighting against their, uh, either they are doing it with their art or their voices yeah. or their songs, they're showing their, the, the world that we don't want to, to welcome uh, miners or wind companies here because they will destroy the reindeer herder husbandry. You I just, yeah, I've heard that the, that even, even conservationists are kind of threatening Sami life in a way. Like, I mean, it's funny that we see these renewable energies and conservationists is seen as pretty, you know, like in alignment with the land. So that's interesting that they're threatening a culture that is so has been so in peace with the land. Mm. So it seems ironic. <laughs> Yeah, but you know the people or the big companies and the, the um, they they don't they see the the land and the possibilities they have what they can create and they don't think so long term like maybe yeah. fifty years but after fifty years it's all the resources are gone like yeah. the land is destroyed and we don't want our children to to grow up with this um to to they should have be be able to do the same as we can mm -hmm. but it's always a struggle it's like we always have to to fight for for the rights and for not to to have this wind industry and miners coming here yeah yeah but we have the Sami parliament. They're also working uh, for for the Sami people. And so there um, is there's Sami in the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, um, they they are uh, like they work for the Sami. They they don't have this uh, legislative. Uh, I'm not sure how I how will how to that's... explain this in English. Yeah. But they work for the Sami cases, and, and they also get money from the government. Oh, good. Yeah. In order to fight for Sami causes. Yeah, like, uh, and we also have this ELO convention. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, my six-year-old had a, a very important um, 
message. So mommy, it's fine. We, we have plenty of time and I yeah. love how you are with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, but Sami, yeah, I was going to tell that we're also protected by this ELO conven co convention. Uh -huh. it, this paragraph, um, I'm not uh, just, just doesn't know the details, but it, they are working for the rights for the Sami people, like our traditions should not be, that, that we are allowed to to keep on with our traditions uh we're protected by this law um, wonderful so, so that's that's very good that's very good that is good to hear yeah you've seen how you know modernization expansion has been creeping into sami lands um how do you maintain your connection with the earth and the animals maybe this is like how can someone in in a modern society do this you know how can they maintain that connection um for us i would see say like living up north and we have this possibility sorry okay we have this possibilities to just to go out and be in the nature. Yeah. And for many people, that's not possible. Maybe you have to travel with the train before you come to to like some place near trees. Yeah. Um, but getting into possible. but you say getting into wild places, getting into nature is yeah or you can also travel by meditating that's also a way to come out in the nature but yeah yeah for, for for me personally it's very important to be in the nature to 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 have the connection yeah and i i've been living in uh, big cities and uh, my um i belong to the north and the and yeah. to the nature so for me it's i can't like go back or or live another place i have to yeah. be near the nature and the animals yeah yeah this is the same for me i grew up on the edge the edge of nature and the city kind of i feel like i'm i'm in between you know yeah which is kind of interesting because i feel like a connector with people so like i feel like always in between worlds yeah. between cultures and so i feel like i'm helping like want to help guide kind of both ways in a way you know because modernization is kind of an, an ineb inevitability for our earth but how can we do it in the best way you know how can we maintain our 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 connection to nature and culture and bring that into our our modern world mm -hmm. while at the same time preserving it i mean so yeah it, it's a difficult question and it's a very huge question yeah and uh, but to to re reuse is the one thing yeah not to, just to buy buy new new things and yeah and throw it and to pre appreciate what you have yeah one thing i found when i was in germany my wife is german and um i found this kind of it was it was hard to find something plastic in her house and i really loved that because americans are are, are finally getting there they're not quite there yet but it, it's like just things are plastic they get thrown away it's just it's just yeah it's ter it's, it's terrible <laughs> yeah it is terrible it, yeah it is an, we are in the state how do you say the state now that we we use too much yeah and we're blind we can see we can't see this because it's so normal and it's right. so in our lives but 
if everyone starts to with themselves and start to reuse things and don't buy new stuff it will yep. it's, it's a start yeah perfect yeah. It's, okay. Uh, yeah. okay what is one piece of wisdom that you live your life by uh that has led you through times of uncertainty uh, the last part i didn't understand like, um what is what is a piece of wisdom that helps you get through your life through hard times or uncertain times mm, you get what you give <laughs> you get what you give <laughs> no but uh, uh I, I like i like to to live uh, the rules like um to to be like um there's there's always a reason why things happen and this to look uh what the reason is um yeah depends where in life you are like if you meet struggle it it, it can mean that you meet struggle because you are going to uh get through it or learn from it you can meet struggle because you're not supposed to go that direction mm -hmm. yeah um if you say the question one more time maybe i can answer it better <laughs> no i like i mean that's that's good it's just just a piece of yeah advice for for people i don't know it's like <laughs> <laughs> no but i think actually about that just the, the struggle part because we all need struggle and um mm -hmm. and then find the reason why the struggle is there if you yeah. you meet the same struggle all and all and all over again then you have to look another way uh, mm -hmm. and try a different way yeah because i know that uh because like if you feel float in your life then you are doing the right things you know if you feel like things, yeah, yeah like you things are going well yeah. everything like it yeah. goes yeah in many different ways so if you meet struggle so then you have to look at why what the reason so Perfect. and then overcome it and <laughs> yeah yeah well thanks for having us today and for speaking with us thank you yourself and yep. i'm glad I, I i hope i i'm happy to be here and great and thank you okay appreciate it and uh all right well um we'll hopefully we'll see you soon <laughs> or we will <laughs> yes okay okay bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.